Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? It's Ryan Miller checking in with GST's YQMA, episode number 37. Today, we talk about the pros and cons of training to failure. Training to failure is one of those concepts that people tend to take to the extreme, and it actually really hurts their performance from day to day, even from set to set, as we're gonna talk about. Just like every other concept in the gym, there's always gonna be people that wanna use it constantly, and that would be taking it to the extreme. And then there's also gonna be people that don't wanna use it at all. They think it's terrible, horrible, and they shy away from it completely. The thing with training to failure is that it's very tough on your body. I want you to think about days in the gym where you pushed things to failure constantly, and maybe you did that for multiple days in a row. Maybe that was a concept in a long-term training cycle that you did. And what you would find out and what you would experience and what you probably have experienced in the past is that when you train to failure on a regular basis throughout every training day, what happens is you, you tend to feel very run down and you feel run down just from set to set, but also from exercise to exercise and from day to day. Your training performance slowly um, dwindles and decreases and just overall, the mind and body tend to feel very beat up and very run down. Clearly, that's not the best way to train. That's not the best way to train for strength gains, size gains, or for fat loss. So you want to stay away from constant training to failure. And that's a real obvious reason why. And there's also many people that, that do this and they don't even realize that they're actually setting themselves back because I believe they associate training or the thought of training hard with having to feel run down and having to feel beat up because those are the people that, that are gonna say, you know, if you're not throwing up in the gym, if you're not laying it all, all out on the table every single day, you're not doing enough. You should never stop. You should always go full bore 100%, always train to failure. Um, those are the people that believe that training should leave you basically feeling like a rundown piece of garbage or a mess all the time. And that's just not the right way to go about it. There's smarter ways to train, and I believe in training hard, but also training very smart. Uh, just like everything else, you know, work smart, play hard. There's always that give and take, and with training, it's, it's no different. So don't train to failure 100% of the time. So I kind of jumped into reasons to not train to failure right away, and there's actually a question behind today's YQMA, and this person who asked this question associated their training with a higher level of volume, but also training to failure nearly every single set. They listed out five or six working sets per exercise and said that they love training high volume, but also every single set except for their first set was taken right to failure. To me, high volume training and frequently training to failure is a really um, almost like an oxymoronic combination. You really can't have high, the highest volume training and train to failure with every set. And this is going to be why. Let's just say that you take your first set of an exercise to failure. What that's going to do is it's really going to set back your performance and the amount of total reps that, that you can hit for that second set. If you take a set to failure, you'll notice that it really impacts the level of volume that you can put out during your second set. Now, if we take that another step further, and during your second set, you train to failure again, what happens is that third set just, it, it definitely decreases in performance and volume. So let's say you go 12, 12 reps to failure on the first set. What's gonna happen is, instead of getting around that 10 to 12 mark on the second set, um, what you could probably do if you didn't go to failure, you're gonna end up with fewer reps. Let's say you get, seven to eight and that's also to failure on the second set so now whereas on the third set you might be able to hit another eight to ten or even 12 reps if you weren't pushing those first two sets to failure what you're going to see is that third set because it has two sets before it that you took to failure is really going to suffer in reps and you might just knock out something like three to six or three to five reps overall what you've done is You've taken sets to failure, which you might think is great, and that you're training high volume in doing so because you're pushing out as many reps as possible, 
but what you've actually done is you've decreased your total reps completed over those three sets because you went something like 12, maybe eight, and then you have 20 to around five, so 25. Whereas if you were to be stopping one to two reps shy of failure on sets one, two, and three, what you would see is you'd see much, uh, many more reps, say 12, maybe 10 for 22, and then maybe around another 10 for around 32. So you can see you have an increased number of reps when you don't take every set to failure, and that actually produces higher volume. And this is why I say that if anybody ever tells you that they're training for the highest volume possible, but also training to failure on a, on a set by set basis, you know, you can be certain that that person is wrong. They're using a poor method and they're actually not pumping out as much volume as they're capable of. Literally all that person would have to do would be to stop training every set to failure, stop one to two reps shy of failure on all their sets, and they would instantly increase their amount of training volume, um, they would grow, and they would likely strengthen as well. So what is the right amount of sets to actually take to failure per training session? Obviously, it's okay to take some sets to failure because there are times where pushing yourself to your limit is beneficial. And it's just like a lot of other concepts in life and in training. Use training to failure in moderation. Don't go to the extreme and use it all the time, but also don't go to the other end of the, of the spectrum, the other extreme, and never use it. Now with GST, every single day has at least one AMRAP set, which is as many reps as possible, and that's used for the foundational core exercise of each day. Now with your supplement lifts or your supplement exercises to the core exercise, I don't recommend taking sets to frequent failure and that's just for the same reason that I talked about earlier to get more volume out and to basically produce less stress on the body and the ability to recover more efficiently from session to session stop one to two reps shy of failure for those supplement exercise working sets you'll get more volume out you will feel better from day to day and it's smarter overall, it's easier on the joints, it's just smarter overall. So that's one thing that you need to consider is we could say that taking um, you know, at least one set to failure per day, which is kind of like that nice mental test, it keeps you anxious to hit the gym and see what you can do, it keeps you very mentally engaged in your programming, and, and it's fun, and one, one set per day is not going to hurt anything. If you add on a couple more throughout a few more supplement exercises, maybe the last set of um, a few supplement exercises taken to AMRAP or failure, that's not really gonna hurt you. What hurts you is when you have this philosophy that training to failure is necessary for every single set. So find that happy medium, maybe one to three fa uh, failure sets per day. Don't neglect failure sets completely, but don't use them all day long, every single day in the gym. So if you want to get the most volume out of your training, stop one to two reps shy of failure, take advantage of the benefits of doing that, and uh, just you know get your grow on, get stronger, get bigger, lose more fat. It's all good, and that's, that's what happens when you train smarter. For the person that asked this question today, um, I can't remember your name off the top of my head. You were on a YouTube comment, and uh, your avatar was a little snake. <laughs> that's about all I know right now. Um, but thank you for asking this question. This is a great topic and it's great to compare and contrast high volume training goals with training to failure on a regular basis. If anybody has any other questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Email me personally at ryan at growthstimulustraining.com. You can always text me basic questions. It's right, right to my personal number at 919-671-8585. I love to be accessible and please subscribe to this channel so I can keep bringing knowledge from my brain right to yours. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday afternoon, everybody.